up that that, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, YouTube says I'm going live, and look at that, 8 o'clock right on the nose. <laughs> I actually lost track of time for a few. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the channel, and as always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a bit. My name is Rich Sharpentier, and this is our regular Monday morning live stream. So we've been doing this uh, for a couple of months now, I'd say. And today we've got a couple of topics. The first one, uh, saying goodbye to your photos with Lightroom. Uh, if you can't tell, last week I was playing around with uh, making some retro postcards, so just having a little fun with uh, Photoshop. Let's see, we've got a couple folks on, so good morning. Thanks for stopping in already. And I'll regularly check over here to see if I'm missing anybody's comments. But um, last week I had someone get in touch on the YouTube channel about a video that I did months ago about almost losing some really important client data. And I had forgotten some of it was already on the cloud for sharing with the clients. And you know I hadn't made a backup of that particular drive in a bit but um, learned my lesson after that one. Didn't lose anything, but um, I did receive a comment on that video and I had already been thinking about doing this topic today. Um, so last week, uh, or maybe it's been a little longer now, but uh, not too long ago, Adobe helped photographers everywhere lose some of their photos. So, <laughs> and uh, I don't think they meant to do it. But I'm just pulling it up. So here's one of the many articles. So this article is from The Verge. So Adobe accidentally deleted people's photos in the latest Lightroom update. Talk about painful. So one of the big things that all of these companies are doing with us lately is um, they're encouraging us to use their cloud. We've got the Adobe Creative Cloud. You know, we've got all these different cloud-based uh, applications. I use Dropbox with some of my clients. Um, I use the Google OneDrive with some clients, and um, everyone's trying to get us toward uh, using these cloud services, right? So scrolling down through this one, so photographers had been posting in a panic across Twitter, Reddit, Photoshop feedback forums, and uh, they'd gotten the Adobe's latest update for Lightroom iOS app. So this was um, a specific problem with a specific app. And uh, suddenly their photos and their presets were gone. So I've been using Adobe for way over a decade, uh, actually coming into two decades, huh? And um, I've always appreciated uh, what their products. And I started having problems with, with Adobe when we started going completely cloud-based that we've got, you know, We've got the Adobe Creative Suite, and it's all cloud-based, and I've got to type in my um, password regularly for them. And um, I, I miss Lightroom 5. Um, a lot of the new updates to regular Lightroom for desktop uh, do nothing but slow my machine down, and Lightroom used to be a very streamlined application. I don't feel that way anymore. If Jody was sitting here on screen right now, there'd be a lot of bad language about uh, where the direction that Lightroom is going in. But so for these folks, um, you know, it was just one of the mobile apps. So, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people lost, uh, lost data, um, lost their images and apparently video as well. So apparently they could bring back some of the images, but not the same resolution and video files were just out the window. So this is literally the worst tweeted another customer. Usually I don't go through other people's articles, but you know, this one's up on the verge. You can just look up uh, Adobe Lightroom deleted photos and you're gonna find a lot. And I mean a lot. Um, so Adobe sincerely apologized to the customers who were affected by this issue. Um, one of the things that this says to me is that these cloud-based services aren't quite there yet. Yes, I use a lot of cloud-based services. Like I said, I use Dropbox regularly for my clients to exchange files. And, um, but the things that are on my Dropbox are also on hard drives. I've got a pair of old Drobos. I've got five portable drives just sitting behind the screens here. I've got another Rubbermaid slash Sterlite. So this one's got seven more drives in it. Um, you know, I back up my backups usually. So months ago when I had the problem uh, where I had thought that maybe I'd lost something on a drive. 
you know, I actually did have almost everything important saved on the cloud, so I got that back. But I think what I'm getting at here is I don't think you can depend on just one solution. So you got this, you know, Adobe mobile app and you can start uploading to their cloud or you can have it on your devices. I'm thinking you should probably have it in both places that it's saved on the cloud, but it's also um, either saved to a portable hard drive, you know, SD cards, whatever it might be to uh, give yourself some additional backups. Don't rely on only one solution. You should have um, you should have multiple backups going on. It's just like you know the backups to my iPhone using the cloud-based stuff from Apple. I also have a program called iMazing that's on my desktop that I back up my iPad and both my iPhones. I don't work for iMazing. I have been using them for a long time. I do highly recommend that desktop solution. It's it's awesome. Now. I wanted to talk about this a little more, not just this Verge article and what happened to Adobe, but um, here we go on this paragraph right here. This one really jumps out because I'd seen this video as well. This isn't the first time that a company, company mistakes have caused user photos to go missing. Canon recently took down its image.canon. Now, if you follow a lot of other uh, photography YouTube channels, um, you might have heard of Tony Northrup. And if you haven't heard of Tony Northrup, I'd say pop on over to his channel. He's got some great reviews. They've got great instructional material as well for photographers. But um, Tony did a full video about the issue that happened to image.canon. And once again, there was lost data for, um, for photographers. Now, a lot of these companies are trying to move us toward this cloud-based solution so that we're out on a photo shoot. Rich is somewhere in uh, the Prescott National Forest. I'm taking some shots and I can upload them right away to one of these accounts. Awesome, right? So, so I could be offloading my images as I'm doing the job um, using whatever uh, mobile connection I might have. And I want to talk about the mobile connections in a minute too. But um, so there was a huge loss uh, at, at the launch uh, with the image.canon and the image.canon is also kind of integrated in some of the new Canon camera launches. So I watched Tony Northrup's video and he was, he was pretty, um, uh, pretty discouraged. And he was also suggesting to people that, you know, you don't want to use this as your one solution either. So imagine being a wedding photographer, shooting the wedding, you're uploading automatically. You think you've got everything stored. And then an issue happens with one of these cloud services and that entire wedding photo shoot goes right out the window. So I just want to pull this up. Why are you? There we go. I just want to um, share Tony Northrup's address with you because I, uh, I do think it would be worth your time. Uh, let's see. Tony. There we go. And he covers a lot of topics. When I was first studying for the Part 107 test, um, Tony's channel actually had some basic breakdowns on the um, on the Part 107 exam. So he was one of the folks that gave me some of my initial study material while I was getting into that. So yeah, one week ago he had the video Canon Hack. So you can see it right here. And um, like me and like a lot of other photographers and folks who are building our drone businesses, we all have different tech backgrounds. So he had a... Uh, tech background as well. So, you know, I was on the network engineering side with uh, wireless telecom and uh, I can't remember what he was doing. Um, I think it was security work. But anyways, uh, a lot of us have these tech backgrounds, right? And so Tony had a couple of things to say about, you know, a lack of redundancy or anything on that Canon hack. So, you know, when you have time, you might want to check that video out. And um, I also enjoyed his 8K versus 4K. So if you're if you're also thinking about video and still photography, it's a good channel to subscribe to. Once again, not affiliated or anything, but just wanted to pass that one along. So in the end, you know, let's go back here. Goodbye photos and uh, Lightroom. Wish you were here. Yeah. Um, I feel really bad for those folks who've been using those services. I personally, you know, I've got the Lightroom Creative Cloud app on my iPhone and on my iPad. And I don't use it. I don't, I do not like editing on my phone or my iPad mini. Um, that's just me. So maybe I'm getting older and I'm, I'm turning into a cranky pants here. But 
in the end, I like having screen real estate when I'm doing my edits. So most everything that happens for me happens on desktop. Now, for all the people thinking about you know, using these cloud services while you're on a shoot, um, you also have to think about your data plans, okay? So for those of you who don't know me or this channel very well, I was a full-time Airstreamer for over a decade, so I lived in one of those silver trailers. Um, from 2006 through 2008, tons of travel with it. Then I kind of got stationary here in Prescott with it, but I was still full-timing in a 25-foot long by 8-foot wide Airstream. And we didn't have regular internet connectivity. So in order to connect to the net, portable hotspots on iPhones and other phones, right? Portable hotspots are awesome. I can do my work for most anywhere I've got network coverage. Here's the thing. Even the unlimited plans still have limitations. So Verizon can call this unlimited all they want. They also tell me after 10 gigs, they're going to start throttling me. Um, so they're going to slow down my network connectivity. I can still use their bandwidth, but um, I, uh, it's going to be massively slowed down on me. So for all of these developers, you know, Canon and, and Adobe and everybody else with these cloud solutions, um, they are not catering to a highly mobile crowd and, um, or, you know, highly engaged photographers, let's say that you're out shooting every day and it's part of your job because they would realize quickly that offering a cloud storage solution where I, I've only got 10 gigabytes of uh, monthly usage. So I actually have two different lines that we have hotspots on for when we're traveling because doing things like this YouTube video here, um, this, this eats bandwidth like crazy, okay? So if you're looking to be this highly mobile photographer, maybe you're interested in the van life or RV life, um, one of the big things is if you're planning on using these cloud services um, for all your images, um, number one, you're gonna burn through bandwidth. Number two, there's still one point of failure. And so Adobe and Canon have both proven this out recently. There have been other issues over the years with cloud-based services, um, hacking attempts and actual hacks um, on some of the services out there. And let me see here. Yes, his drone study video was great, especially if you have some prior knowledge. And yeah, no, Tony's, um, Corey, Tony's video was fantastic. That's, you know, I had signed up for classes with another group as well. But um, Tony really got me going quick. And I remember before the part 107 exam, I actually went back and took a quick look at just a couple of his high points on that video. Me and my drone, I have unlimited data with Verizon. It's only, yeah, I've got the unlimited data too, me and my drone. Um, and we actually are on the Verizon business plan as well. But um, they still do a massive slowdown after you hit that 10 gigs. So I, when we were in the Airstream full time, I was constantly checking my data usage and I was splitting between this phone and that phone. If I was out full timing with the Airstream right now, with all of the uploading I do to Udemy, to YouTube, um, to Dropbox for my clients, uh, I'd be blowing through that so quickly. Um, between these videos, the tutorial videos and things, uh, we're coming up on the end of our um, on the end of our cable cycle, and um, I think we've got like 700 gig plan. And you know, I will use I, me, not Jody and the other devices in here, just me. I will use um, I will use a couple hundred gigs a month with uh, with all the exchanges and things with my clients. But yeah, I you know unlimited but still kind of limited so you know when coming back to this whole thing that wedding photographer on a photo shoot um for a client who's just uploading everything to the cloud and is depending on the cloud and then something happens to the cloud you you still need a second place to be doing your backups so the other month when i put that video up where it terrified me that one of my drives wasn't spinning up and i didn't think for a moment that it's also in my Dropbox for all the stuff sent to those clients because it happened to be my client media drive. I'm gonna minimize my crazy little postcard for a second. And um, I just wanna show you, so right now we have uh, my SSD drive for when I'm rendering Final Cut. We have a client media drive. That media drive is only for the year 2020. Each year, I do a new drive, at least one at minimum. Then I also have an all image galleries, and this is the container for, um, 
for multiple image libraries. I uh, use my hotspot for YouTube on tablet while driving training all the time. Yeah, no, and that does work, Corey. It's, um, I think it hits when you're starting to get into the big uploads and stuff. That's, uh, that's when I start really eating the bandwidth, which is uh, another thing. We actually had a network outage here this morning. So I was setting up to use one of the hotspots, and the network came up just 30 minutes before we started here. So I, I was committed to using the hotspot, and then I was going to see how much one of these live streams actually takes on the hotspot. Maybe I'll do that as a follow-up one. So, all right. I also mentioned the Airstream, so just so that you know, we're going to be talking about another thing as well. Um, there is a very old, very retired website that I have. So this is, if you're bored, if you're interested in, um, in uh, RVing and Airstreams, um, I started a blog when I first hit the road back in 2006 with my 25-foot Airstream. won't go into the details of why I hit the road. If you're a longtime follower here, you know some of that. But um, this, um, this particular website, it's... Uh, if you look up the Airstream Chronicles, you'll find it, or it's blog.richsharpentier.com. Um, and I was updating to this particular blog from 2006 to like 2012. So there's a lot of building a photography business in there from when I was co-owner of a gallery here in Prescott. And my last giant data loss happened in 2008. Some of my images, my photography from the big traveling in 2006 went out the window. And I had backed it up to DVDs because that was one of the media formats back then. Um, and a lot of those DVDs didn't function anymore. So I, so I lost some great photos from 2006 to 2008. But after that, there's always backups and backups of backups. Like, you know, this crazy little Sterlite case here. So... Um, but yeah, so if you want to see some other stuff beyond drones and things, and you're just like, who is this guy? Um, this will give you a great idea of who this guy is. So uh, looking at this, so when you get to the main site, um, what do you call it? So this is just a for fun thing, by the way, and then we'll move into the next topic today. But um, And I, I need to kind of revive this one. It's been ignored and neglected for quite a while. Um, when you pull into this, it's got a front page. It's got some information about the online classes. But if you just go to blog and just click on blog and go to the end, because it shows the most recent ones, but you will see, so we got a lot of posts in here on that first page, and I have 203 pages worth of posts. I'm going to that number 203 real quick, and let's see, okay, August 15th of 2008, and that's when I was doing the big transition to starting this new site up, because my old site from 2006 to 2008 got hacked. I uh, got a denial of service and got hacked because I made the mistake of doing some posts about scammers. So, and uh, one of the scammers took offense and and uh, proceeded to do an all-out attack on the old website. So we uh, did a new website, and I didn't really talk much about scammers ever again. because That was a big mistake on my part. By the way, one more thing just to show you. Let's pull up my Lightroom catalog. So like I said... I am not storing anything to Adobe and nothing against Adobe, but I don't want to edit on my mobile devices. I want an actual screen. I want a mouse. I want my keyboard. I want a tablet, um, uh, you know, a pencil tablet. But um, I, uh, I want to make sure that I don't have one point of failure. Hey, Ray, good morning. Glad you made it. And Matt, right behind him, good morning. Is there any merit to suggesting that the clients back up their own data or would that be an unprofessional request? You know, I... Um, for my web clients, so we do web work for some clients as well, um, I do encourage them to make backups of everything. I've got backups of all of my photo shoots since I did the gallery business years ago. And I have had people follow up years later, do you still have that? And I used to give them things on disk, or we'd copy it to thumb drive, or then I started using Dropbox. But um, yeah, you know, regular, uh, regular photographers, film photographers, um, did they inventory everything forever? You know, I think there's expectations with folks now. Well, it's digital, so it's really easy. Um, I go through so many drives and add so many drives every year. It gets really expensive. And uh, it sure would be nice to clean out some of that stuff for, for client shoots. But I've happened to hold on to them. And actually, this is what I was going to show you guys next. Whoops, didn't mean to hit the down arrow button there. So file, if we go down to open recent, I've got a couple of Lightroom libraries. Now, some of these are duplicated names because I had um, 
regularly Adobe makes you upgrade your database because of a new version. But we've got the 2020 complete collection that's going on this year. That's uh, one of my drives. We've got the print collection that's on uh, one of my media drives. So the print collection was from when I was selling prints and canvases and doing all that work at the gallery here in Prescott. Then we've got the 2019, 2018, et cetera. I do have other libraries. These are just the most recent libraries that have been open. So, um, so I eat up a lot of space and you'll see the 2018 and I'd given it an iPhone name because I was doing a lot of iPhone experimentation. 2017 complete, 16, 15, 14. I actually have 13, 12, 11, 10, um, down to eight as well. So, so I have a lot of those. Good morning, Michael. Welcome to the channel. And so, yeah, I'm, if I'm looking over here and I pop over here, that's, that's where the chat window is. And um, the other week I had experimented with the chat window on the right-hand side. Um, and I'm not going to be doing that because uh, fortunately YouTube caught it, but somebody was, uh, somebody was being a turd on, on stream, uh, saying some not nice things that fortunately YouTube filtered. So you guys didn't even have to see that. So that was really nice. All right, so the next thing, and we were actually, here's our lead in right here. Um, so I can leave that up for a moment. So I don't know about you, but if you're a small business owner and you're building your business, like the, uh, the drone work and the uh, progression work and all those things that we're doing here, um, every year you're gonna need some new equipment. This year has been especially weird. I think we can all agree with that with everything that's been going on with the pandemic and everything else. It hasn't been a great year. And as things started getting weird in the spring, I said to myself, we're gonna have a very tight budget this year. Um, I'm gonna hang on to cash um, just in case, because we don't know how long this is going on and when they're finally gonna find a vaccine or a cure or whatever. But so I've been, I've been you know, keeping tight control of the bank account, but if you're in a small business, you're going to have some capital investment. I get a lot of flack from family and friends sometimes. They're like, oh, well, you bought a new camera or whatever. It's a toy. No, that's part of my business. The drone is part of the drones is part of my business. I have insurance on those things. I have insurance on all my cameras. I, you know, I'm covered um, for lenses and the camera bodies and things. This is part of my business. For other people, yeah, cameras are for fun. But so every year I set down a budget in my mind and um, last week I blew through this year's budget. So this year's budget was only a couple thousand dollars. Um, I would love to replace this particular computer, build a better mapping machine, all of these different things. But so I've been making my choices on what to invest in and what not to invest in. So a few weeks ago we did get a nodal ninja bracket for doing 360 um, 360 imaging with uh, my Canon 7D and my Canon 5D. So we picked up that nodal ninja and uh, I picked up a fisheye eight millimeter lens. So that was one of my big purchases this year. And we have a second big purchase. Uh, what drones do I use me and my drone? Well, so I've got an old original Phantom actually that's sitting out in the garage because uh, no more batteries for that particular one. We've got the uh, Mavic Pro, that was my original, and the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, when I when I was purchasing drones a couple of years ago, I was still in the Airstream. Um, the move to this particular rental property was a year and a half ago. So everything that I was buying uh, from 2006 to 2018, everything that I was purchasing, the purchases were made based on the fact that I was living in a tiny Airstream. So that's why I went with the Mavic series. Did I want a Phantom 4 Pro? Yes, I, and I still want a Phantom 4 Pro. And now that we have space, that'll probably be in next year's budget. But in the meantime, those Mavics fit down into nothing. And so they didn't heavily impact my storage space in the Airstream. So, um, so yeah, earlier in the podcast, if you saw, I had a link to my Airstream Chronicles you'll actually get some insight into living in a incredibly tiny space and still running your business out of that incredibly tiny space. But so now we're into the lead up of, oh no, what did Rich spend on? I have been watching and waiting for months for a Theta Z1. And the Theta Z1s have been out of stock and back ordered forever. So I get uh, every couple of weeks, 
BNH Photo Video drops me an email to say it's not available. Adorama drops me an email to say it's not available. And um, I got an email from Best Buy the other day, of all places, and Best Buy said, hey, the Theta Z1's available. I went on Amazon really quick, and here we go. This is the Theta Z1. So what you're seeing on screen, because I, in a couple of months, we're going to be heading south. We're going to be actually doing a rather large-scale virtual tour on a very large RV resort that has 800 units in one section of the resort and another 206 in another. We're going to be doing a larger virtual tour for that client. And we're also going to be doing some video photography and some additional web work for them. So I've been waiting for the Rico Theta Z1. And um, we do have from last year, uh, we have an Insta 361 X, but I've experienced a lot of issues with it when we were trying to do um, bigger 360 virtual tours. So what you're seeing on screen here, yesterday the Theta Z1 came in on Saturday, like at five o'clock, and I was looking out the window every 10 minutes from 8 a.m. to when it finally got delivered. And I think Jody like wanted to push me over a railing or something because I was looking so often. Um, I even used a magic eight ball to see if the uh, Theta Z1 was gonna show up earlier. So it didn't show up until the early evening. I plugged it in to charge it up. And then yesterday we did some minor testing. Now let me say up front, the highest quality that I have seen so far in doing 360 panos has to be with a digital SLR, um, with that nodal ninja bracket or any other bracket that you can get. That's when you're just gonna get the top quality, really great resolution, super sharp, not noisy, and if you're playing around and using off-camera flash as well, you can make some really gorgeous walkthroughs. The reason why we're interested in the Ricoh uh, Theta Z1 is because those are such high-end 360 virtual tours. Uh, they require a lot more editing, a lot more post-production, so we charge more for them. We wanted to give people a middle-of-the-road option, and everything that I'd read and watched on the Theta Z1 said this is probably... A great, uh, a great middle ground for um, for these 360 cameras. So we're going to be experimenting this week. Let me know on channel. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, it's uh, it's very cool. I don't know how many are in stock or for how long. They've been out of stock for months. I've been watching since like April. Where are they? Where are they? And so I don't know if I lucked out here the other day or what. And also, I'm like, I hope it's not a refurb or anything. It's not a refurb. I opened it the other day. Didn't do the unboxing because I don't feel like setting a camera up here for an unboxing. So we did some experimentation here. Now, what we found, and if you guys would like to see a comparison, let me know in the comments below because we can do a comparison between the 1X, the Theta Z1, the 7D, or even the 5D Mark II if you want. So let me know down in comments. Um, if you'd like to see those comparisons. I've already been doing them for myself. So the Insta 361 X is a cool little camera and you know, for the price that it was and everything, it's, it's okay. What I was noticing in presentations on Cloud Pano, on Kula, on Theasis, was that the edges of whatever, so if I loaded uh, 360 images to Kula, let's say from the One X, the edges were so pixelated, there was so much noise. And as you rotated, you have this narrow band of you know decent resolution decent focus without a lot of noise around it but outside of that band into here there was a ton of noise that was really disappointing and that's when we had made this, the decision let's go ahead and use a dslr we've got a ton of dslrs from our regular photo work so let's dedicate a dslr to this and one of the nodal ninja sixes and so if you hadn't seen some of those i can go back on those again but they looked Great. And then we also use some off-camera sto strobes, our alien bees that we use for doing portrait sessions. Um, we use those strobes and some information passed along by um, Nathan Cool. Go check out his channel as well if you're into the 360s. And Rich Baum, and his last name is B-A-U-M. Both of them have some great interior um, interior uh, photography lessons and things. They, they both share a ton. But so when we were doing these off-camera strobes and things, those are the high-end, those are the gorgeous 360 interiors. 
We wanted something that would be a little faster. So that's where we were thinking about the re Rego. So there are multiple things we can do with it. So we'll be talking about it over time. But um, let's just take a look at these. And these are actually a little, uh, on my screen at least, they look a little underexposed. I didn't edit these at all, okay? Right out of the camera, we used the Theta Z1's HDR mode and um, loaded them up to Kula yesterday. So I'm gonna show you that afterward. So we're in Lightroom here, and Lightroom hasn't lost these photos because it's, the, uh, it's not the portable version. As you can see, there's the Nissan right over there. Hello, Nissan. So this is a Theta Z1, all of these are, so we're just gonna go through. And yes, the walls are a very hideous color. Once again, I'm not the owner of this building. I, I would not have painted this place this way. Um, they're not the easiest colors to work with. By the way, one of the big things with their HDR in the Theta Z1 is that you can actually get a little detail out of the windows and sometimes you can get a lot more. We're gonna be learning about that as we're doing more editing of this particular camera. So there we go in the living room and into the kitchen. Then we've got the little den area slash guest room. And there we go. So this was something, so I set this one up at the edge of the kitchen and the sliding doors. Check this out, we've got detail out the window. Now I tried the same thing with the Insta360 ONE X. Uh-uh, not, not that level of detail. And then if I was to take the Canon 7D with the off-camera flash with the Helion B, you wanna talk about gorgeous window pulls, it's absolutely amazing. But if you're tight on time and you want something that comes across pretty good and is pretty realistic, um, this is looking good. So it didn't do these cabinets justice. Uh, these cabinets are a little darker than what they're showing on screen, but hey, a little post-production and you can get those cabinets dialed in. Into the hallway where the master bedroom is, and we're gonna see these as a 360 view in just a couple of minutes as well. Into the master bedroom and then the master bath and a second one of the master bath because Jody said, let's show the... Uh, Let's show those doors open. And there we go. So what was the final thing? So literally a couple of minutes of time, Theta Z1 on one of my light stands. And what came out of this? Let's pull it up. Oh yeah, there's the Airstream Chronicles. All right, so here we go on Kula.co, Theta Z1 interior testing. I've actually set this one to public. So if you go over to Kula.co, uh, so it's K-U-U-L-A dot C-O, and you do a search on there. So they've got a, a button called Explore, and you search for AZ space drone. You'll see the things that we've made public. So this one is public, and what I'm gonna be doing down the road here is I'm going to be loading some comparisons, and I'll be labeling those comparisons so that you can take a look. But taking a look at this one, what I got on my One X was that these edges over here, um, this tree and this tree over on this side, they would be all pixelated and somewhat blurry. It was not. It was not encouraging, and it was not something I wanted to use to show a client. Uh, ben Claremont, absolutely. I've watched several of his videos, and hopefully the Z1 will help with those uh, shadow monsters. Exactly, Ray. It's, uh, we're going to be experimenting, and of course, it's not going to do everything. There's going to be post-production, and if we want the absolute best quality, it's going to be the 7D. So we've already started talking to clients about this. And we've also started building some comparisons, but I'm gonna do this on Kula so that you can see it. So, you know, just pop by the Kula probably tomorrow because we're gonna be doing some experimentation today. Um, it's all hazy outside today, so it's not a great day. I think we've got the smoke coming in from the California fires. And if you remember, we had the haboob the other week. So the air quality and the sky are not awesome right now. But all right, let's take a spin around this real quick. So I'm super impressed with this compared to the Insta360 ONE X, not down, you know, discounting the Insta360 at all. Um, it's a good little 360 camera, but if you actually want to start producing something to sell to people and you want to be a little quicker, you know, I'm thinking this might be something. By the way, oh, one other thing we noticed yesterday, just doing a couple of photos in the house, this thing eats battery like crazy. So if you've got the screen on and everything, it just starts, you'll have it sitting on the post while you're just syncing up the Wi-Fi, and um, <coughs> you're already draining several percent. So all right, this is looking really good to me. I didn't, I didn't do any click-throughs yet, but I also wanna zoom in here. So you can really read that there. Let's go inside. All right, 
this is a really strange house and this living room actually feels very dark um, and all the light is coming from the porch area. So this is actually way better than I got out of the Insta360 just shooting in here. It did not give me that window pull, but there are ways to do that um, with the Theta Z1. So we'll show some of that experimentation later. Um, if you're in a hurry, excuse my hiccup, if you're in a hurry to see that, go over to Nathan Cool's channel and he's got some videos on actually um, doing raw photos with the Z1 and then uh, merging them together and getting a lot more out of them. But the big thing that was grabbing me was usually on these walls here. This would be all pixelated. It's not. This is this is nice and sharp. And um, yeah, we didn't really stage this house for this. This was just me running through yesterday. So, you know, just giving it a whirl. So a little more detail out here. I could fix this with just a slight bit of post-processing, but I didn't want to do that yet because I wanted to see what's it going to give me. By the way, we're not dirty people, and that is not a piece of junk on the floor. That is a piece of gaffer's tape. So that was telling me where to put the stands because I actually shot with the Insta360 ONE X, with the Theta Z1, and with the Canon 7D, and I had the tripod centered right at this location. So once again, not dirty people, that is gaffer's tape. There you go. I keep noticing it in the thing and I'm like, what is that on the ground? And yesterday I kept going to pick it up too because I thought it was a piece of garbage or something. Then I was like, oh no, you put that there. Clearly I'm getting senile. All right, so just one more shot. Uh, so one of the guest bedrooms and also the, uh, the uh, den area. And yes, the paint job is that bad. The owners had patched up some areas and some of the walls, when you start looking really close, they just don't match up well at all. All right, so let's turn out of this one and let's go into that kitchen area. And we did get some more detail out of this. So those windows are looking a little better. And if I did just a slight edit in Lightroom, I can really make these pop. And I say that because I already did that. I tested that yesterday. Let's get into one more part of the kitchen. Once again, cabinet color is absolutely off. Those walls are pretty spot on for the color of the walls. And you gotta think about color cast and time of day and where light's coming in too, because it does change the look and feel. But these cabinets should be darker. Uh, this little center island area should be darker as well. Um, the, the table here is pretty spot on. And then looking into that living room area, it's actually darker in there. It's, it's such a dark middle area. All right, let's go to the next one. So we're just looking in a little hallway where the, um, where the master bedroom is and the washer and dryer. But this came across really nice. So once again, no edits here, no edits. This is out of the camera trying out their HDR mode. All right, let's go on to the next one. So we're now inside the master bedroom. And if you want to know the story of why the master bedroom is pretty empty, I'll tell that story down the road. Uh, not one for today. We're just looking through these. But um, yeah, and you can see where the paint splotches are. And they, they, there really are some paint splotches and strange things. And there's also shadows and light playing off of this too because it's a very reflective uh, wall. Let's head on into the master bath. So not, we didn't get any detail out of this window, but it is one of those glazed window deals too. Um, so nice job on the, uh, on, the stand, on the counter here. Once again, those cabinets are a little too bright in that shot. Overall though, this has done a really good job. So out of the box, just testing this out. And then we'll take a look at that last one with the little doors being open and the closets being empty. So um, we're anticipating a move in the near future. So we're actually looking around for a new rental. Um, and we don't know if we're going to find one in Prescott. So if you guys have any suggestions of great places to move that uh, would like a um, guy who's into drone photography and uh, tutorials and things, let me know. And I'd actually take a cooler place at this point. This summer's been a little too hot. Let me take a look on over one more time. All right. So no additional comments. As always, I want to thank everyone for joining up here and hanging out for a bit. And I do hope that these things are helpful to you. So I am planning on doing a 1X versus Z1 versus 7D uh, set of videos in the near future. Other folks have done these and Corey Clicks had mentioned on the, uh, on the chat there, Ben Claremont, he's got a lot of these as well. But I'm gonna be doing these from my own perspective as well. 
uh, loving an Airstream for you. Yeah, Matt, it is awesome. You know, I had a good time with it for a while. The circumstances were strange why I first started out full timing. Um, I got to see the U.S. I, I traveled all over with it. I went to Airstream rallies. Uh, I was writing, um, I was writing uh, tech magazine articles for Airstream Life magazine. And that was before we all had mobile hotspots and things. I was actually running around with a 1x data card and a router that I could put the uh, PCMCIA uh, card into. So I'd go to rallies and I, I'd get up in the morning, there'd be all these old guys around my Airstream getting the free Wi-Fi from me. <laughs> um, it, it's really interesting. It's also a challenge. 25 by 8 means the thing has 200 square feet. Um, and then you put your cabinets in and things and, you know, the little kitchen to work around. You don't have a lot of space, so you go super, super minimal. So for me, it was all about small cameras, um, you know, laptops. I didn't have the big monitors with me at first. And, um, you know, whenever you're going from place to place, uh, you had to pack everything up in there and then pull it all back out again. Um I'd say California. Um, you know, one of my other things, me and my drone, I do, I've got some severe allergies. It's actually uh, an unfun medical thing. But I, I keep looking online for best places for people with severe allergies. They do actually suggest a couple places in California. But right now with the fires and everything, um, one of the things I saw was all of the suggestion, well, a lot of the suggestions were to be in coastal communities. Um, so one of the suggestions was actually Daytona Beach when I was a kid. I didn't live that far from there. So I do know people out there, but you know, I also like flying and working here. So it's, it's a toss up, but we've got a couple months to make some decisions. So, so if anybody knows, uh, you know, either places in Prescott, if my Prescott audience here, uh, pops in, if you know somebody with a rental, we don't need a big place. That's one of the things, this place is way too big for us. Uh, we need something half the size because uh, the electric gets a little expensive and there's a lot of wasted space. So there you go. All right. Like I said, down in the comments, um, let me know if you'd like to see some comparisons with these. Ben Claremont's got some good comparisons. And then once again, Nathan Cool and Rich Baum, if you want to look at some other interior editing things and also the interior 360s. One of the big things that we're interested in is not just real estate. I, I, I have a lot more fun like working with the RV parks and resorts where we're documenting bigger areas, showing off, um, showing off their amenities. Here's the cool swimming pool. Here's the second swimming pool. Um, here's the radio controlled car racetrack. Literally one of my clients, that's one of the amenities. They've got an RC um, controlled, you know, so you got your radio controlled cars and they have regular races out there. Jody has a lot of fun photographing those. So we'll be doing some of that again this year. And as Jody said, it's kind of like Disneyland for retirees, that particular place, because they just had so many fun things for people to do. Well, one of the things for showing that off to potential new residents is the drone work and the 360 work, you know, and they're adding to their existing premises. So now you're getting into construction progression work. So you can find a lot of services to offer to resort communities and resort locations. And you get to have the fun of flying your drone and taking the photos if you enjoy that kind of stuff. I would never leave AZ for California. Yeah, yeah. it's um, like I said, one of the things that I was looking for is the low allergens and coming off the water. That might be a good thing. Another one they mentioned was Provo and Colorado Springs. But uh, a couple of years ago, we worked with one of our web customers in Pueblo. And... Um, that didn't go over so well. The constant winds in Pueblo in the fall. Um, there was a couple nights in the Airstream where we were thinking the Airstream was going to roll over. And one of the really big trees right next to where we were split down the middle from the winds. So I don't think I could convince Jody to uh, Colorado Springs because it's short. It's a short distance north of Pueblo. And if it's that windy during the, um, during the fall, ugh, I don't even know how somebody could fly a drone there. All right, everybody, I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm glad that everyone stopped through. Um, one big point, make your backups. So if you're using a cloud-based solution, make sure you got a physical media solution as well. And, um, you know, don't, don't do what I did months ago where I let it go for a little while and thought that I almost lost something. By the way, that drive came right back online with a reboot afterward. 
but it was a good reminder, hey, are you doing everything? And if you're shooting for a lot of people, um, like this weekend, I've got two shoots again. So I've got two different properties, again, a 40-acre property and a new property that I'm going to be going out to do, and then I'll be coming back here, offloading gigabytes of photos again. Um, so you've got to make sure that you have those backups because when you lose them, that's when they're going to call you looking for something again. Okay, everybody, thanks for all the participants on here this morning, and uh, I hope you had fun. I hope that uh, we had some useful information, and we'll be doing some more. Please, in the comments below, let me know um, if you'd like to see those comparisons on the 360s or if they're totally not interesting at all, and um, we'll take it from there. Also, make sure to like and subscribe this one. Uh, this channel is a very slow-growing one because we do a lot of niche topics, and not you know it's not just the mainstream standard drone stuff we're we're kind of more into the business side of it and uh building our businesses so the audience growth is a little slower than, than some of the other big channels all right everyone let's take a look over i see that uh thanks for the information all right awesome thanks me and my drone and michael rich mentioned uh you and grapevine is that I'm missing something here. I think I'm going senile. <laughs> oh, well. Well, all right, everyone. We'll see you again soon. There might be some other videos popping up. Oh, and by the way, for my patrons, um, yes, another uh, map pilot is going up this week. Actually, two new map pilot videos will be going up this week. For all the other folks on YouTube, you might see it a few weeks down the road or a few months down the road. But for the folks who are backing the channel, I really appreciate you. So that's why I'm getting some unique content to you guys. And that content will probably go to other folks later, but you've got first crack at it. And also your feedback has been great. And so there are going to be some additions to those videos based on a couple questions that I've gotten recently. All right, everyone, we'll probably see you midweek as well. And if not, we'll see you next week for sure. Have a great one and stay safe out there, everybody.